From New Hanover County Schools Television, three-time Blue Ribbon winner for the North Carolina Schools Public Relations Association for Outstanding Electronic Media, this is your School News. Welcome to Your School News. I'm Lauren Ricks. And I'm Leah Schwagel. Topping our newscast this week, math memorization strategies are global. Bright Minds Outreach Program visits Winter Park, and Logo Teacher is named 2016 Exceptional Children's Teacher of Excellence. Our top story this week, students in high-performing countries for mathematics are less reliant on memorization strategies than their peers in lower-performing countries, according to a new analysis of international assessment data. With a complete report is YSN reporter Kathy Kale. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, which administers the Program for International Student Assessment, recently released a report that looks at an interesting piece of data. This 93-page report offers the takeaways for math teachers from the 2012 results. The reports focus on the relationship between memorization and math achievement. It finds that students who report using memorization alone when studying math are successful with easier problems, but struggle with more difficult ones. Memorization can be really bad in a classroom because students have so many things that they are memorizing that they often get confused and don't know which rule they're memorizing. Uh, it does have a place in some classrooms, especially at the early age when students are developing their number sense and really why numbers work and how they relate to one another. The PISA survey gauged memorization used by asking students whether they agreed with a number of statements such as, when I study for a mathematics test, I learn as much as I can by heart. So when I try to take a test, I try to memorize the formulas to take the test. Well, I try to remember the formula of the problem, like what to do. I do it so it can help me, not just on the test, but in the future, because it, it's like really important to remember it because if you don't, it'll just be like stuck on the test. The PISA results also show that students are less likely to use memorization strategies if they have positive attitudes, are motivated and interested in problem solving and math, are confident in their math abilities, and have little or no anxiety towards math. Some strategies that teachers can use to avoid so much memorization are really all about teaching students conceptually, letting them build the concepts on their own and not giving them, for instance, a formula, but having them develop the formula so that when it comes time to actually use that formula, they will remember how it was derived as opposed to just remembering a bunch of numbers and letters um, and trying to pick the correct one. The percentage of U.S. students reporting that they learned math problems by heart was just above the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development average. Students from Macao, China, a high performer, used memorization the least. Surprisingly, the study also found that boys are less likely than girls to use memorization strategies, and that finding was consistent across participating countries. Reporting for your school news, this is Kathy Kale. With a grant from Duke Energy's Bright Minds, the Children's Museum has launched a scientific outreach exploration pro program which teaches STEM-related subjects through experimentation to underdeserved first grade children. The program was recently at Winter Park Elementary teaching the students about soil. With a combination of PowerPoint slides and hands-on ex exercises, students learned about the animals that live in the soil and the makeup of the soil. It was a fun and an engaging time for the students as they discovered that soil is more than dirt. Soil, they learned, plays a, plays a very important role in supporting life on Earth. Many plants need soil to grow and the students got to plant their very own lima beans. Living organisms also call soil home. Students got a chance to create earthworm homes and the multiple experiments all aligned with the NC Science curriculum. The school system's 2017 through 2018 calendar committee held their first meeting last week. The calendar committee representatives brought information gathered from their constituents to the meeting. For future meetings, teachers and parents who wish to provide input should contact their calendar committee representative for their school level. All the meetings are open to the public. A final draft of each of the 2017 through 2018 school year calendars will be presented to the Board of Education for approval at the November 2016 board meeting. 
The next calendar committee will be held on October 20th at 4 p.m. in room 301 of the administration building. Finally, Bethany Ney, an intensive social communication support program teacher at Holly Tree Elementary School, has been named New Hanover County's 2016 Exceptional Children's Teacher of Excellence by the North Carolina Department of Public Instruction. Ms. Ney will be recognized on Thursday, November 9th at a banquet and awards ceremony as part of the annual conference on exceptional children to be held in Greensboro. Ms. Ney believes that every single child, no matter how impact, impacting the disability, can grow and learn. She is an advocate for all the children and is willing to do whatever it takes to help students be successful. Ms. Ney's leadership is known within the school she serves and also across the district, supporting staff in extended content standards and general curriculum. As a trained mentor and by participating in professional learning groups, she makes herself available to build capacity for the teachers and to positively impact our standards for supporting students. Now, when your school news continues, we have an exciting lunch menu forecast. Plus, coming up in 60 seconds, we'll have reports on the Trask students are recognized as community volunteers. Storytellers visit William, uh, Williams Elementary and Virgo Academy signs partnership with Army Corps of Engineers. This is Your School News, on cable and online. Look for our blue logo for all the latest news online at www.nhcs.net. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Lace up the cleats, put on the pads, and tape up those ankles. The football edition of Sports Roundtable is back for its 17th season on the Learning Network. I'm Joe Catanacci. If you're a high school football fan, then join me for Sports Roundtable. We feature the area's most in-depth look at local 4A gridiron action. From a strong defense to an explosive offense, we spotlight it all on the Sports Roundtable. Each week, you'll get a first-hand account of all the plays from New Hanover County Schools' four head football coaches. It's the Sports Roundtable, Wednesday nights at 8 p.m., right here on the Learning Network. Sports Roundtable is made possible with the support of Papa John's Pizza, Sam's Club, and PortCityDaily.com. Hey, it's Ava and this is Tess from Do Your Selfie, where we recreate the hottest looks from today's biggest music videos. After cleaning out our closet, we have a lot of clothes we don't wear anymore. Like this old pile of t-shirts. It's not garbage, it's actually a new rug. And to make it, all you need to do is cut, tie, and glue. Cut the t-shirt into strips. Tie the strips into knots. And glue the knots to the bath mat. I love it. Give your garbage another life. And recycle. Welcome back to your school news. October is National Bully Prevention Month. This week we focus on one of the most dangerous and hurtful forms of bullying. Cyberbullying is the act of harming or harassing using various forms of technology in a repeated and deliberate manner. With the increased use of communication technology, cyberbullying has become increasingly common, especially among teenagers. With a report on this form of bullying is YSN reporter Chase Fulton. Bullying is not new, but thanks to the internet, Students are bullying other students wherever they go, and on a much larger scale. Online harassment, more often called cyberbullying, is a serious problem. It is usually not a one-time communication unless it involves a death threat or a credible threat of serious bodily harm. Kids usually know, when it, know it when they see it, while parents may be more worried about the lewd language used by the kids than the hurtful effect of rude and embarrassing posts should know that cyberbullying is very different from what they recall from their childhood days. Um, it's very pervasive. 72% of students, ha teens have been cyberbullied over the past year and up to 32% say they have experienced chronic and, and repeated bullying um, online. 24% of teens say they have actually participated in cyberbullying. Vicious forum posts name calling in the chat rooms, posting fake profiles on the websites, and mean or cruel email messages are all ways of cyberbullying. This type of bullying has grown with the advances in technology because it lets a bully remain anonymous. Bullies are natural instigators and in cyberspace bullies can enlist the participation of other students who may be unwilling to bully in the real world. Kids who stand around doing nothing in a real-life bullying incident 
often become active participants in online harassment. There's many things that can be done to combat cyberbullying. Um, parents uh, need to help teach their kids not to participate in it. The most important thing is not to respond to on online bullying. Don't respond to text, don't post anything, don't play into the bullies' games. Students need to tell their parents um, and school personnel, like their counselor, social worker, principal, or the school resource officer, so they can get some help with that. While ignoring the bully, be sure to save the evidence so that school officials, internet providers, and even the police can properly deal with the bully. Cyberbullying may give bullies anonymity, but it always leaves evidence. New Hanover County Schools takes all types of bullying seriously. As soon as the cyberbullying starts to go to officials for help, cyberbullying is often an extension or escalation of bullying that is already happening at school. Parents should also be told what is happening. Students tend to use technology differently than we do. Teens today start playing games online and sending texts on their cell phones at an early age, and most teens have smartphones that keep them constantly connected on the internet. Many are logged onto Facebook and chatting or sending text messages all day. Fortunately, our growing awareness of cyberbullying has helped us learn a lot more about how to prevent it and protect students from online dangers. Reporting for your school news, this is Chase Fulton. Each year, the Star News accepts nominations from teachers, parents, scout leaders, pastors, and others who work in the community to recognize the character, accomplishments, and volunteer work of people younger than 15 in New Hanover, Brunswick, and Pender counties. From hundreds of nominations, 15 students are selected. New Hanover County Schools had six students selected, and three of those were from Trask Middle School. Congratulations to 6th grader Gunnar Robinson, 7th grader Mark Samuel, and 8th grader Caroline Sawyer for being selected for their contributions and accomplishments. It was an exciting time for D.C. Virgo Preparatory Academy as they signed a partnership agreement with the Army Corps of Engineering. The Corps is partnering with the school to help further advance the school's science, technology, engineering, and math efforts. The initiative became official at a partnership agreement signing ceremony held at the school. On hand to sign the agreement was Colonel Kevin Landers and Assistant Principal Kenneth Davis. The partnership will leverage the missions, talents, and resources of Army Corps and engineers to advance the STEM program in the curriculum. We will talk to the students about various engineering STEM um, events that we're having. We'll also give them opportunities to have hands-on projects that they can do to educate them into various things that the Army Corps of Engineers does on a daily basis. Also, they will have the opportunity to go and visit sites, our different field sites. They have opportunity to see what other people do as far as the Corps of Engineers do. The partnership focuses Focus aligns with the White House's and Department of Education's focus on educating global leaders and preparing students for STEM careers in the global economy. According to the Department of Education, careers in all STEM-related fields will increase 14% between now and 2020, with even more jobs for growth expected in STEM-related areas such as mathematics, computer science, and the biomedical fields. At Williams Elementary, students in the first through the third grades all leaned forward, eyes centered on the front of their classrooms, as their minds floated below the ocean waves where a big, ugly fish was having trouble making friends. No, they weren't watching TV. They were listening to UNCW storytellers tell the exciting and animated story, Big Owl by Andrew Clements. The UNCW storytelling troupe is made up of 10 students who have performed each year at Williams. Each story told is done by an individual student, and each performance is based on a book that any Williams student could find in the school or local library. Besides Big Al, students also heard The Last Puppy and Porcupining, a prickly love story. All the performances by the UNCW storytellers are designed to bring literature alive, to inspire students to read, and encourage them to find their own favorite books. During the course of the afternoon, the storytelling troupe rotated from classroom to classroom. The students were all smiles as they heard fantastic stories and laughed at the storyteller's animated telling of each tale. Williams students in all grade levels particularly enjoyed the way that the UNCW storytellers used funny voices who tell their tales. 
This is an exciting time for both the students from Williams and UNCW with lots of laughter and anticipation as everyone is entertained and surprised. Now don't go away. Coming up, schools throughout the system launch disaster relief efforts to help our neighbors in need. Plus, an education index, North Carolina high school students saw performance gains last year on key measures of college readiness. Your school news will continue after the break. decorating their little brother. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. Welcome back to your school news. It's time for our education index, a look around the nation and the world at some of the top stories in education. Topping the index, Congress has made a late bipartisan push to reauthorize the Carl D. Perkins Career and Technical Education Act, which governs vocational and other programs that teach workforce and career-related skills. But it's still unclear, with a presidential election in a lame duck session coming up, whether lawmakers will be able to get a bill to President Obama's desk before a new administration in a new session of Congress begins. The Strengthening Career and Technical Education for the 21st Century Act passed by a 405 to 5 vote in the House last month. It would provide states and districts more leeway when it comes to accountability and goals for CTE programs. For the most part, both lawmakers and CTE advocates have hailed the bill. But momentum was checked last month when the Senate Education Committee postponed a hearing on a Republican-backed Perkins reauthorization bill. In New York, a student with autism could receive special education services that are just above trivial. Yet in New Jersey, courts hold schools to a higher standard. This disparity is at the heart of the argument Colorado attorney Jack Robinson will make before the U.S. Supreme Court in what's seen as a potentially pivotal case. Robinson maintains that for 34 years, Federal circuit courts have been in disarray over the level of special education services a school is required to provide its students under the Federal Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. The law states that schools must provide disabled students a free, appropriate public education in the least restrictive environment through individualized education programs that are tailored to their needs each year. Across the country, disability rights advocates have rallied around the case as a potential win for America's 6.5 million students who receive specialized help through their IEPs. Finally, North Carolina high school students saw performance gains last year on key measures of college readiness, the SAT college admissions exam, and on advanced placement tests, according to results released today by the College Board, which, administrator, which administrates the national exams. North Carolina's average SAT scores for 2016 high school graduates from all schools increased by one point each on the critical reading and math portions of the exam. State gains on both parts of the test outpaced gains nationally, which showed a three-point drop on the critical reading section and a four-point decline on the math portion. State Superintendent June Atkinson said the latest results tracked with other recent data showing that students in North Carolina's public schools are making steady progress, even with higher standards and expectations. And that's this week's Education Index, a quick look at some of the interesting education stories from around the nation and world. Now, don't go away. We'll be right back with the Lunch Billow Fair. This is Your School News, on cable and online. Look for our blue logo for all the latest news online at www.nhcs.net. I'm Sierra Dermody. And I'm Lily Parks. And join us this week for the morning show. Start your mornings off with our outstanding and exhilarating features. In Green Revolution, our host takes us to Colorado to look how wide energy improving and how we can put it to a better use. We also have a new episode of A Plus Teacher. We sit down with Murray Middle School's Teacher of the Year, Andre Newby. 
I'm Natasha Griffin, and I have your latest year school news on the morning show. The Board of Education held their monthly October meeting, and I have all the highlights and notes. We also have this week's lunch menu, our hilarious joke of the week, and, mor and morning show math. So join us for the morning show weekday mornings at 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. and Saturdays at 10 a.m. right here on the Learning Network of the Cape Fear. Welcome back to your school news. It's time now for this week's Lunch Bill Affair. Hunter Liedman, our lunch menu reporter, joins us now with this week's school lunch menu so parents, students, teachers, and everyone working with the New Hanover County school system can plan their lunchtime options. Thanks and welcome to this week's edition of the Lunch Bill Affair. If you've ever wondered what it's, what's on your school's lunch menu this week, here's what we have coming for you. On Tuesday, October 18th, enjoy a delicious school lunch with a grilled chicken sandwich, a grilled cheese, or a stuffed crust pizza. On the side, we have vegetable soup, tater tots, garden salad, applesauce, and fresh fruit. On Wednesday, October 19th, dive into a special hump day meal with teriyaki chicken and rice with an egg roll, some cheesy breadsticks, or a pork barbecue with hush puppies. On the side, we have slaw, pasta salad, glazed carrots, garden salad, mandarin oranges, and fresh fruit. On Thursday, October 20th, jump into the lunch line and enjoy some nachos grande, some fish nuggets, or popcorn chicken with a choice of cornbread, muffin, or dinner roll. On the side, we have black beans, corn salad, North Carolina sweet potato, garden salad, diced pears, and fresh fruit. On Friday, October 21st, enjoy, finish the week with some delicious spaghetti with a breadstick, a cheeseburger or a deluxe chicken sandwich. On the side, we have macaroni salad, french fries, garden salad, mixed fruit, and fresh fruit. For the weekend, I've got my healthy tip. Limit how much TV and computer time you use to one to two hours a day. Try playing outside instead of staying inside all day. After the weekend, come back to a chicken filet sandwich with a lasagna roll-up and some breadstick or a corn dog nuggets. On the side, we have black-eyed peas garden salad, diced peaches, and fresh fruit. This month, this month is National Farm to School Month. This year's theme, One Small Step, highlights the simple way anyone from students, parents, and food enthusiasts to food producers and nutrition professionals can take small steps to get informed. Get involved and take an action to advance farm to school to their own communities and across the country. Now taking a look once again at your school entrees for the week, you've got some great selections with some really great sides to choose from throughout the week. Stay on, stay on the lookout for Nachos Grande on Thursday and Cheeseburgers on Friday. That's what's on slate for your school's cafeteria so don't miss any of those nutritious, delicious, and healthy meals. From the newsroom, this is Hunter Ledman asking, what do you get when you cross a sweet potato with a jazz musician? A yam session. Thanks, Hunter. Don't forget, you can also catch the Lunch Bill Affair during the morning show here on the Learning Network and get lots of healthful nutrition information online at www.nhcs.net slash nutrition. Now don't go away. Coming up, schools throughout the system launch, launch disaster relief efforts to help our neighbors in need. Your school news will continue after the break. Lace up the cleats, put on the pads, and tape up those ankles. The football edition of Sports Roundtable is back for its 17th season on the Learning Network. I'm Joe Catanacci. If you're a high school football fan, then join me for Sports Roundtable. We feature the area's most in-depth look at local 4A gridiron action. From a strong defense to an explosive offense, we spotlight it all on the Sports Roundtable. Each week, you'll get a first-hand account of all the plays from New Hanover County Schools' four head football coaches. It's the Sports Roundtable, Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. right here on the Learning Network. Sports Roundtable is made possible with the support of Papa John's Pizza, Sam's Club, and PortCityDaily.com. Welcome back to your school news. Last week, Hurricane Matthew rolled through town. While New Hanover County got a pass, many neighboring counties did not. That's right. Last week, floodwaters rose between 3 to 5 inches per hour, 
forcing mandatory evacuations in parts of Pender County, but both Bladen and Cumberland counties are suffering the after effects of Matthew. To help our neighbors, many schools in our system have started disaster relief efforts. In fact, one school is helping not only neighboring counties, but also those left homeless in Haiti. Here in our final segment, we want to share with you some of the schools with programs underway and encourage you to help them so they can help others. Parsley Elementary School is collecting baby supplies, new clothes, blankets, bottles, formula, diapers, wipes, pacifiers, and more. The school is working with a pediatrician in Lumberton to get these items in the right hands. They will be collected through October 21st. If anyone in the community would like to donate, they can bring new baby supplies to Parsley Elementary School. Laney High School is also collecting items through next Wednesday. You can bring hand sanitizer, female hygiene products, socks, male and female undergarments, sleeping bags, blankets, pillows, and water directly to the school office. Riceville Beach Elementary is working with the Pender County Board of Education and emergency management crews. They will hold a Black River Basin relief drive on October 19th through October 26th. They will be collecting shoes, undergarments, socks, shirts, pants, toiletries, puzzles, books, games, and cleaning supplies. At Anderson Elementary, they are partnering with the Salvation Army in the Love for Lumberton campaign. They will be collecting items from October 17th to the 28th. The school is collecting cleaning supplies, toiletries and hygiene products, baby needs, clothing, and canned goods and non-perishable food items. College Park staff collected non-perishable food, water, clothes, and baby formula last week for the students, staff, and families of the Rose Hill Magnolia in Duplin County. Now they have started a second campaign to help the hurricane victims in Haiti. One teacher will be traveling on a mission trip to the area carrying the supplies. You can drop off items at the school until October 26th. Finally, just at our deadline, we heard that Holly Tree Elementary has started Students Helping Students. They are collecting school supplies for Robeson County Schools all this week. Plus, Holly Shelter Middle School has adopted Malpass Corner Elementary School. They are collecting non-perishable food items until October 27th. We know that many other schools have campaigns or are starting efforts this week that we were not made aware before we taped this program. We encourage everyone to do their part to help our neighbors locally as well as those further away with even fewer resources at hand. That does it for this edition of Your School News. Recapping some of our main stories, math memorization strategies are global. Bright Minds Outreach Program visited Winter Park, and Holly Tree Teacher is named 2016 Exceptional Children's Teacher of Excellence. Remember, Your School News is on cable and online, and don't forget to start your morning with our light and lively morning show, weekdays at 6 a.m. I'm Lauren Ricks. And I'm Leah Schwagel. On behalf of the entire YSN crew, thanks for watching New Hanover County Schools TV on the Learning Network. Have a great day.